This week on the Ocean Cruises podcast, we are speaking with Hobersa and Duca from the YouTube sailing and DIY channel of Life Crafting. Hobersa and Duca are from Brazil and have been living an alternative lifestyle for nearly 10 years. They started producing videos of their container home build before purchasing their first floating home. They recently bought a neglected 12 meter steel boat that had been on the heart for 20 years. They've completed a total refit of the boat, which has taken them over two years. They have now started their cruising life and have recently been spending time in their home country of Brazil, hopping between anchorages and this coming season they will be cruising north into the Caribbean to get more experience and some passive miles. To follow Roberta and Duca's journey, check out their YouTube channel, Odd Life Crafting. You can support the podcast on Patreon and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, watch the interviews on YouTube and download the audio on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And I thought I needed money because the original plan was to build a boat from scratch. And I'm like, I don't have enough money to build a boat. And then if I finish the university, I'll have the money. And if I finish the master's degree, I'll have the money. And then I'm like, it's late now. You know, it, four years pass by. So many YouTube channels pop up. So many of them grew. So many of them made a living out of that. And we're late. There, there's no way we can do that now because we lost the train, basically. I thought that was my idea. And on that day in Indonesia, I'm like, late is in a year from now. Late is two years from now. I mean, of course, it's not as easy as could be four years ago. There's a lot more competition, supposedly. I don't see as competition, but a lot more, you know, it's somehow if you have like 2,000 YouTube sailing channels to pop up in the search or on the suggestion, you need somehow, you need to differentiate from others, of course. Yeah, and I'm like, so. No, then we found out um, Gone of the Winds. Yeah, and Duca said, yeah. "See, this couple started with a, a motorhome, and then they changed it to sail, and it worked. So yeah. let's just start with something else." <laughs> yeah, so I basically, that's funny because if we say that to some people, they say, "Look, so you just made a YouTube channel to make money or just to make a job?" No, it's not true. That was my really, it's like my full time dream for years to make mm -hmm. documentaries, but. I, I, I have a business degree and an engineering degree. I know that you need to make money in order to survive. That's it. You need to pay for food. You need to pay for expenses. You need to be a YouTube, say, a YouTube channel need to pay for itself at least. Otherwise, it won't exi exist for long. So we created a long-term plan in order to get to where we are right now. And that was done from day zero, 100%. We didn't start as a, oh, a sailing channel. So yeah, we didn't start as a sailing Yeah. So yeah, basically, I mean, the like, thing is, it's like you you want to, you always wanted to do documentaries. You basically do documentaries now, yeah. Um, and you wanted to incorporate that into your life and earn money. I mean, yeah, you know, nobody does these things for free because they take hours and hours. You know, it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah but the so, funny thing is, yeah, yeah but yeah. the funny thing is, the channel evolved uh, during time. So we started as I mean, a tra filming this trip. Basically, we we're like, we need to start with something. We need we need to have like a portfolio of videos in order to grow a channel. We cannot like have a one good video that someone is gonna watch and be like, oh, is there anything else? No, there's nothing else. So I'm like, we need yeah. to start somewhere. And we created a channel based in seasons in order to achieve what we want. So like we do one season this trip. We go back to Brazil, we do another season on this and this and this and this. And hopefully, if the channel grows, we are gonna make enough money to have a boat instead of save the world. That's that's the goal. Nice. So we're like, how can we create seasons that are related to each other? But at the same time, we actually like, it's not bullshit. We actually do like what we do, but takes us from, you know, all the way to where we want. And since the beginning, I always were, was interested in metal boats, steel or aluminum boats. So I'm like, if we want to build a metal boat, we need to learn how to weld, how to work, how to use tools. I never use any tools in my life, Robert neither so we're like know even the name. so i thought like we don't have enough money to build a boat but we have enough money to build a house so how about we go back to brazil we found a free land like on our family we asked for a little piece of our family's land and just to do this experiment and we buy a shipping container we buy all the tools and we build a shipping container house if the channel goes well, we can build a boat next to the house. We move in the house, we live full time in the house and we build a boat next to the house. If this works, and then we sail the world with the boat and we have a house back on our hometown. That was the plan. Of course, plans change a lot along the way. 
But that was like the vision that we had. Maybe more or less worked out. Yeah, somehow. I mean, change it a little. We don't own the house anymore, for yeah. example. I wanted to yeah. ask about, you know, I um, I mean, I think that was a long time ago. I do all my own construction. I've buy, bought and sold houses. I do all my own work. And I always watch um, Tiny Home Living on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I watched some of your guys' videos like four years ago, five years ago. Yeah. Like, it was a long time ago about the steel container home that you built. And um, yeah, I think it was, I don't know, maybe a year ago, something like that. You popped up. I was like, oh, no way. They were doing the tiny home. And I, remember, I remembered your uh, videos from that. She did an amazing job of that. It was really good. Like, you, yeah, we never uh, finished it, though. It was a great design. Yeah, yeah well, we that's never what finished. I wanted to ask because you stopped doing videos and I was really disappointed. <laughs> oh, the, the, the thing was, by uh, things took a turn without, we didn't expect that. The, the thing is, when we started the house, we couldn't find a piece of land that we could build a boat next to it. The only land we yeah. found for free was my dad's land that's on the top of a hill. That means we could not take a boat away from, down the hill. There's no way we yeah. could build a boat there. So then things <laughs> start taking a turn. Like at one point we are like, we need to do it here. There, we have no option. So we start building the house. At one point we fell in love with the house enough to not even want a boat anymore, to be honest, for a little while, not too long. Yep. And then, of course, the dream of having a boat start coming back. And then we start searching. Like, we never stop searching for, like, designs and uh, layouts to buy. You know, like, boat projects to buy. And sometimes I would see some old boats. And I found a dream boat online for sale. And then someone bought my dream boat and brought to a hometown. And then I lost the dream boat. And then I saw this guy trying to sell the boat. Then I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to buy that boat. But what happens is was not the right timing. We had not money yet. We were making a little bit with the channel, but not enough to build a boat. And at least I was waiting. I don't know if you know this story, but it's a long story. And that's the reason why our channel is called Odd Life is because a friend of my dad from high school, when he was an exchange student in the US, he was like an uncle for me. And he died out of a heart attack when he was 53. And he put me on his last wheel. So I knew I was going to get some money from that. I had no idea how much. Could be $1,000, could be $50,000. But I knew since day zero, since Indonesia, I'm like, any money I get from my dad's friend is going to go towards the channel and towards a boat. So that's why we call Odd Life, because his name was Odd. Oh, right. Okay. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so basically... It, it, it was the person that thought, Duca how to speak English yeah. and he had always the best camera so Duca was into yeah. cameras since yeah, that, I met him when I was so 10 nice. years old so I met him when I was 10 and he started coming to Brazil every single year when I was 10 and back then no foreigners would come to our hometown and he was like as Robert said the guy with like a nice Nikon and all the best cameras that would I would never see any other place so that's how I fell in love with photography was with him and that's who taught me English also so then I'm like, he would be really proud if we had a channel called Odd. That's his name. So we called the channel Odd. And the boat. And the, the boat Odd. Was, <laughs> yeah, but when this guy, when I found this dream boat of mine that I was dreaming even before Australia, that was a crazy thing because it was like a design that I really wanted to build. There was like 43 foot steel boat that I wanted to build. And I found just the hole for sale. Someone built the hole professionally, really well built. He had a mast, but an engine board, all the hatches, all the wood for the interior, it just needs work. I'm like, that's the oh, perfect, perfect project. That's, that's our project, exactly. right? But he put for sale, and I'm like, I'm not even going to talk to him because, you know, he's not going to sell. It's too expensive. No one's going to buy. And a month later, the ad disappeared from the internet. I'm like, fuck, I just lost the boat. And then I wait for a month, and I'm like, I'm going to call the guy just to check how much he sold, who he sold for. And then I called a guy that was a friend of a friend. And he was like, like, oh, so you sold your boat. What happened? Who bought the boat? And he was like, no, I didn't sell. Just expired the, the ad. I'm like, what the fuck? I shouldn't have called. So why? Are you interested? I'm like, yeah, I'm interested. But that was like not the right timing. We were like, you know, 70% in the house done. We need like 30%. We need the money to come that we didn't have yet. So on that week that I, by mistake, started like discussing about prices, we got the money from the US. That was like 35,000 US dollars. We sold half of our old boat that we had a partner. That was another, I don't know, $10,000. And out of nowhere, 
we came from someone that we were like someone that had no money to buy this boat and we became someone that actually could buy this boat. I'm like, fuck, it's not the right time, but we're going to do it. We're going to quit the house and we're going to buy this boat. Yeah, enough stars aligned. You go for it. Yeah, but point. <laughs> the, but the, the crazy thing is, after a month discussing the price with the guy, and I'm like, I'm really serious. We're not, we're not joking around. We want to buy your boat. The day we were supposed to buy the boat, he comes to the shipping container and he's like, I cannot sell my boat. My boat's my dream. I have no money. To, I have no job. My, my company just went bankrupt. I have no money to finish, but I cannot. My, my wife, when she heard that you guys were actually going to buy the boat, she didn't let me sell the boat. Like, nice. He was like, I, be, I, be not, I, couldn't, I cannot sleep for a month already because we were talking about selling the boat. I'm like, nice. Now you start sleeping and I stopped sleeping because, you know, like I told all my friends. and I'm, Of course, I'm not mad with the guy. He's a friend, of course, now. He's a nice guy. And I could not buy the boat. Yeah, we, we just didn't buy the boat. And a friend of ours come up with a second boat that actually a month before, he's like, no, there's this other boat. I'm like, no, I don't even want to see it. I have my dream boat already. I'm going to buy this other 43 foot boat to finish. And he's like, no, but these boats are not. I'm like, no, no, no. no. I don't, don't show me. I, I, I'm in love already. You know, I have the boat. After a month, he's like, oh, but you remember that boat that I told you? I'm like, oh, can I see the picture? So I get the picture. I'm like, oh, not bad. And he's like, yeah, this boat been sitting on the heart for seven years. And it's from a friend of a friend that he doesn't want to sell. But as he's a friend of a friend, if you tell him the right story, you might be able to buy the boat from him. I'm like, right, right. that's a long shot. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, this boat is like in Sao Paulo. That means 700 kilometers away. We are going to go to Sao Paulo in three months from now to go to a concert. So don't give me his number because if you give me his number, I'm going to call next week. I, I know yeah. myself. Hold his number. And the day before I travel, I'm going to get the number with you. And then I'll call him. So the day before the trip, three months later, you know, like sitting calm, waiting for this moment, I send him a message like, hey, I'm Duca. I'm friends with this friend, this friend that knows you. And he said that you have a boat that you might want to sell. And I have a project. Do you want to sell the boat to me? And the truth is, I use my friend as a learning person to buy the boat because he tried to buy the boat before. Right. Don't tell him I told you. Oh, no one tell him that I told you that. <laughs> He's going to know. Too much. <laughs> he, he gets mad. No. He gets mad if I say that, that he tried to buy the boat, but the owner didn't sell the boat to him. But the reality is, it was not the right boat for him. So he called right. up the guy. So like, oh, out. my. Yeah, so he, he called the guy. He's like, oh, my friend said you have a boat that's it's a good fit for me. And the guy was like, so what do you want to do? Oh, I don't have much time. I'm a doctor. I want to sail during the weekends. And I want to see if you have someone to fix the boat before I bring to my hometown. And maybe in two years, I'll take a gap year to to say and he's like no you want to hire someone to fix my boat without you being here no no not it's not your boat the boat's not for you he, he didn't want to sell so when i contact the guy i'm like hey i have a project I, I me and my wife we are building a shipping container house by ourselves our next project we want to build a boat and we want to do by ourselves we want to move in the boat when it's done we want to travel the world and blah 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 he's like no come in we talk yeah so of course, you you know the rest. We end up. It was not yeah. seven years; it was yeah. twenty-two years on the hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, stories change. I mean, like it's crazy. Yeah, they just, it was like he's like, no, I think it's like ten years, maybe fifteen, <laughs> and then we go to the marina, and it's like twenty-two, literally twenty-two years sitting on the hard. Wow, time has flown by for that guy. He just lost <laughs> ten years of his life somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but the crazy thing is, the the really crazy thing is, like when we we sat in town because we were so lucky. The place where the boat was, Robert's sister owns an apartment on that town. I never been there before, and she owns an apartment 15 minutes from the boatyard. So we had a place to crash. We we spent like a week waiting for the guy to come to town to show us the boat because he wouldn't allow us inside the boat without him. And for one week, we just sat on the couch and looked at the wall until we realized, oh, but this boat, the design is exactly the same from a book that we read seven years ago. So let's read again the book. And when I open up the cover of the book, I gave to her this book seven years before, saying, one day we're going to travel the world on a boat called Odd. Mm -hmm. Back then, we had no idea the guy was going to die. He was going to give me some money. We were going to have a YouTube channel called Odd. And we had no idea about anything. 
but we just like the name. But that was like our best book. And that was like one of our favorite books. I'm like, what the fuck? It's like meant to be. The same design. So we're that's like, really, so I read really the book bizarre. again, I'm like, fuck, that's the boat. I'm like, that's it. That's the boat. And a week later, we go to the boat and it's like, the first thing we open, we open the boat, it was like, what? This is not 22 years here. It's like brand new. Like the interior was just like. No, we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything to the interior. As <laughs> oh, the inside was great. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm like, that's it. We are going to buy this boat. We don't have enough money. Literally, like, I mean, like, we had the money to buy and a little bit to start a refit. But somehow we're going to make it work. My family got crazy. My dad got crazy. Like, no, oh, you promised everyone you're going to build a house and now you're not even done. You're going to quit the house. Like, dad, is this an opportunity? It happened. And you're going to take the chance. That That's it. I mean, like, it, we need to take the risk. That's our dream. We need to take the risk. In the channel, at this point, we had, like, 50,000 50, subscribers after like almost two years working on the channel. We were working on the channel for two years already. Mm -hmm. And the boat was a, a huge risk. I mean, like we started the, the refit with one third of the money that we spent actually spent on the refit. Wow. Okay. So we had, I, I would say like 50 grand, like 50,000 US dollars for the refit. And we spent like three times that. But we were like, it's going to work out somehow. I, I'm not sure how, but it's going to work out. And in six months on the refit, we went from, no, I mean like three months. Two months. Two, three months. I think three months went from 50,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers. So that means it was like a good chance. Somehow it worked. Like, And in the end, because that asked for the house to use as a deposit and to finish the house yeah. in the future. <laughs> that was the good plan. I mean, like, right. okay. <laughs> you, you, know, you know when you have an idea? And someone else had the same idea before you, and you wait to tell them the idea before, after. The, so basically, I was like, the original plan was to have a house in our hometown. So when we come to visit the family, we have a place to stay. And then we realized owning a house that you come for two weeks a year, three weeks a year, that means these three weeks, you're going to be working on fixing the house because it's going to be closed for 11 <laughs> months. So it's not a good math. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, if I could rent as an Airbnb, good. But the land is right on my dad's opposite. So he has his chickens, he has his dogs, he has his company there. There's no way I can rent the house where it is. So it was all wrong. So I'm like, if I give the house to my dad as a gift, he can finish the house and then we can use, we can borrow the house when we need. So, oh, so that's what's happened to it. Is he finished yeah. it? No, he didn't finish yet, but the plan was like, I talked to him, I give to him, he can use full year, like 11 months a year, and we just use one month. That's the deal. Right. You don't need to pay. It's for free. It's yours. I don't own anymore. The responsibility of fixing is yours. I, it's not mine, but you let me use whenever I need. But before I told him the idea, he came to ask like, oh, so what, what's going to happen to the house? Are you guys finishing the house? What's your plan? Because we are just moving out of the apartment and moving to the to the beach the, um, with covid he left the town and went to the beach the summer place oh, okay full time oh. so he rented his apartment he don't own the, he, he don't live on his apartment anymore and he had no space to put a lot of his stuff he's like can i use to put you know some of my stuff on your house i'm like nope you can't because the house is not mine i want to give you the house so you can have the house and you can do whatever you want as far as we can use whenever we want. And that's the deal. We gave the house to him. So we don't want the house anymore. Right. But what you've got in return is what you always wanted. So it, it yeah. works out. It makes more sense. Yeah. And, the, and the truth yeah, is, yeah. the house in the long term for him is good because he, own, he has a company that one of the offices is like 20 meters away from the house. And the other, the other office is in like three hours away from in, in another city. So some of his employees many times come from meetings on the other office and have no place to stay. So the company pay for a hotel for them. So owning a small house, a tiny house, means they don't need to use hotels anymore. They can stay on, a, on the tiny house, they, right on the office. They already store. can stay because yeah. we have the bed and there is already a bathroom and, and, a, kitchen. and a kitchen on the same land. So they can yeah. already use the house. Yeah. <laughs> and we are free. I mean, like... We, I wouldn't feel as free as we feel right now if we knew we own a house in our hometown. We don't have anything anymore. That's yeah. it. Oh, it definitely holds you back. 
without yeah. a doubt. I mean, we've um, we've gone through phases in our life of having like lots of properties, renting them and then selling them. And now we do, we've got two houses on one property. We do one on Airbnb, which is amazing and we're yep. doing it. Um, but they are a headache. And it's like when we're basically taking off next year full time, we're, we're getting our bigger boat within a month, I think. And yeah. um, the idea of just having like a property there and you need to fix it if it breaks and there's people in it and they might damage it and then you need to deal with the usual bullshit. It's like, it is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a job. And it's just on your shoulders all the time as well. Do you know what I mean? So maybe it all works out perfectly for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, even, and even more when it's in your dad's land because... In the like, future, it's going to be ours. Yeah, let's put it this way. The last time we went to our hometown yeah. was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, the last time we went to our hometown was in Christmas, over Christmas. And we didn't go back since Christmas. I'm 100% sure if we still own the house, he would be pressuring us to go back to take care of the house. Yeah. Every single month. He would be like, so, what's up? You, you build a house in my land, and now you just, you know, left here. And Abandoned there's it. a lot of, you know, like, you need to come take care of the house. So now we don't have this pressure. That's the thing. It's not our house. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad I found out what happened to that house because <laughs> yeah. that was a little uh, story that I was following we, ages, we ages ago. A, we actually did a post on our website talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> so people right, went to okay. the and I put the link for the... <laughs> yeah, the post, for explanation. Yeah, I right. mean, like, the thing is, like, plans change. Our The original plan was to go to the boat, fix the boat in four months, not the whole thing, but, like, do the basics so we could sail the boat to our hometown. And then we would leave on the boat on the yacht club and we could work on the house. When we finish the house, we set sail. But the problem is when we got to this other city to fix the boat, we realized that being in our way, being away from our hometown was good for the project because we had nothing else to do, only the repeat. Yeah. When you live on the same place for 30 something years, 37 years, you have too many roots, you have too many friends, you have too many parties, you have too many family. like family lunches, like Sunday lunch or family meetings or whatever. And when you are by yourself on a commitment of finishing a boat, you work so much more. Yeah, you just And that was done. good for the boat. And we were in a really good town for fixing, like maybe like the main city in Brazil to refit a boat yeah. with all the welders, all the supplies, everything in the same place. So we're like, no, let's do the full repeat here. That's it. Yeah, good call. I mean, like, I, I know your experience as well, because I kept my previous boat at a marina that was like 10 minutes away from where I live. And then I moved it to a better marina with nicer anchorages close by, two hours away. And when I've worked on my boat, when it was at the further marina, I'd go there and I'd just do like a three days solid. Like I'd wake up, I'd feed myself to fuel the work. And then I would just go to sleep when I needed to go to sleep. Whereas when it's 10 minutes away, it's like, oh, I'll go home, I'll come back. Maybe I won't go, I'll go there for lunch, I'll see a friend. <laughs> you know, like, you, you go home up. to have lunch and take way too long. You go home to have lunch and you take like three, four hours instead of half an hour. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's good to know how that story turned out. You know, like the way this journey has um, progressed for you guys, it's like, it's crazy. It's like you've gone two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, four steps back, three steps yeah. forward. Do you know what I mean? You just kept going. Yeah, yeah. But the same, the original idea has always been there and you have yeah. managed to get there just with a yeah. lot of that. <laughs> yeah, we, we've, there's a even more turns. It's crazy. I mean, like, I think to have, uh, to start a YouTube channel nowadays, you need to be a little bit of a little bit creative on the way you do. Otherwise, it's way too hard to make a living out of it. I mean, having yeah. a channel is one thing. Making a channel from ground from zero to become your full time job, knowing that you rely on that as a full time job. We started the yes, channel dreaming already as a not dreaming. I mean, like we never worked since we started the channel on something else. We since day zero, that's it. We started the channel to be our job because we love what we want to do, but it's too much work to do in parallel with something else. I could yeah. not do what we do if we had an extra job. I, I, I just couldn't do it. My, I mean, my dream would become something that makes me tired because I'm already tired from there. It's, I, I, I couldn't do it. So we tried to, that's, I'm going to tell one, one quick story that <laughs> we never told, I think, anyone, that we actually had a project prior to that in order to make the channel work. 
that's it's like I never told oh, because I the really house. even before the house before everything ah, what was it? since Indonesia the first project wasn't the YouTube channel we had a project before that we started in order to grow the, the YouTube channel okay. I never told because I might one day want to write a book about that because I think it's a really cool story we went well, you to have to tell me right now. now come on yeah I'll, I'll, no, I'll tell I'll tell I'll <laughs> tell on the Can't way to Indonesia, the so on the way to Indonesia, we stopped in New Zealand first. In between Australia and Indonesia, we stopped in New Zealand because right. we needed to leave Australia because of visa. And we bought a ticket from Brazil to Brazil in four months after four months from New Zealand because it was like we have friends in New Zealand. We have a place to leave all our stuff and we can travel light. And then we come back. And if we decide to go to Brazil, we go to Brazil. So we save a ticket just to guarantee that if we decide to go back to Brazil, we have a ticket. On the way in New Zealand, we stopped to visit a friend that I, I was a roommate with him in Colorado back in 2004. I was a lift operator in Keystone, Colorado in 2004. That was, I don't know, 18 years ago. So I had this friend from New Zealand in the US. He was from New Zealand, living in the US. And I always said, one day I'm going to visit you. And he never believed it. And 18 years later, we show up. I don't know, like, not 18, like maybe 16 years later, we show up in his house. And we were talking to him about the ideas that we want, like the possibilities of what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And this guy never went to university, but he created a social me, like a social network, like a Facebook for kids, for uh, childhood schools. When he was really young, and he did so well. He he has a startup, and he did like really really well, and he still is doing really well with with the same company that's called Story Park. So Story Park is basically a Facebook to communicate school kid family grandfathers and like the whole chain and nowadays he i don't know i don't know the number but he he like maybe uh, he has maybe a thousand school using his system or something i'm not, not sure the number but like in the us in europe in new zealand everywhere and i was talking about the ideas with him and he's like yeah you are thinking too much ahead and i always had this problem like on the first documentary i left brazil to work for one year shooting a documentary, to come back to Brazil, to edit for six months, to maybe launch in two years. Is my documentary in two years gonna be important as could be today? Are people gonna be interested on the same thing two years from now? No one knows. How can you know that in two years, it's still relevant what is relevant today? No one knows. And I always had this problem of thinking too much ahead. I'm going to do this in six months and then in 10 months. And then in three years, I'm going to have what I want. And I'm like, no, that's wrong. So when we were in Bali, this is, got stuck in my mind. Like we're doing something wrong because we had ideas. So that's it. We're going to do a YouTube channel. So we are going to wait for another two months that we're going to finish our trip. We go back to Brazil. We find a land that means like three, four months. And then we start building. And after two months, we launch our first video. That means we're going to launch our first video in like seven months, maybe a year. I'm like, are people going to still be interested in shipping container house a year from now? I have no idea. Right now, I know they are. How can I guarantee that people are going to be still interested? So I'm like, we need to take a few steps back. What can we do today that can help our project in the future? So let's start a season about the trip itself, how we created a channel. So basically, our first five episodes are about how we came up with the idea of creating a channel. How I went to the master degree, how I quit my master degree, how we went to Indonesia, the full story about what I told you about going to Indonesia. And I'm like, but this is still too far ahead because we're going to film for two months. We're going to go. It doesn't make sense. We need to find something before that. So let's create an Instagram account about what we want to do in the future. Okay. So we started to create the brand with an Instagram account even before having a YouTube channel, knowing that it would become a YouTube channel. So for the trip, we commit to post every single day of the trip, like one or two times a day, every single day. And the trip became a job instead of just a trip from that day on. And on the end of the first month working on Instagram, I found that my friend had a new Instagram account called Van Lifers, people that live in vans. Oh, cool. so, he's, right. so he's like, oh, did you see my new Instagram? I'm like, 
Ben Lifers, 104,000 followers. I'm like, what the? No, it's not his. I'm like, no. He's not even traveling right now. So it's like just a bunch of people. I'm like, no, maybe he's just like doing like a collaboration. He's helping like with some pictures because he's a photographer. Something is weird. I I, 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 I couldn't understand what was going on, right? But I'm, I was like, I'm 100% sure my friend out of nowhere don't have 104,000 followers on Instagram. So we keep working for two months. And after two months, we went from 500 followers to 700 followers. And we couldn't grow. It was just like fucking hard. So the first week back in Brazil, first week, I'm like, we need to go to our friend's house. So we go to our friend's house to drink coffee. And we sat down and I'm like, Andre, what the fuck's going on? Tell me the truth. The, what, what's going on with this Instagram? Is that yours? And he's like, yes, that's 100% mine. I'm like, what? No, I started from scratch. That's mine. I'm like, how did you manage to grow to 104,000? I cannot get over 700. Something is wrong. And he's like, no, Duca. Instagram back then, now the algorithm changed a lot, but it's about beautiful pictures every day. Yeah. If you have your own project, it's really tough to have a good quality content every single day of the year or three times a day. You, 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 you don't do like interesting things every single day. So this Instagram is basically a repost Instagram that I get pictures from people traveling oh, all right, over the okay. world. And in this way, I can guarantee that I have good content because there's always someone with good content. I'm like, fuck, but how did you do that? I mean, like, did you ask for permission or how did that work? It's like, fuck, in the beginning, I just found pictures. I would just get someone's picture and post and, of course, <laughs> give the credit. And he was like, no, but of course, I gave the credit. Like, I, I put the credit. I put the description that, you know, like, I full credit to the person. Nowadays, it's a problem to do that. Back then, it was fine for most of the time. But his Instagram started growing so quick. And after like a month or two, he didn't need to find pictures anymore because people would hashtag him, ask him to post on his Instagram. So he became someone that would just do the, I don't know how you call it, like just choose the pictures, you know? So people would ask him to put the pictures and, and he started growing so much. I'm like, fuck, you're lucky. You're just like way too lucky. And this guy might be the responsible for us being here today. And he's actually one of our patrons now. He's a really old, good friend. And he's like, so aren't you guys going to build a shipping container house? I'm like, yes, a tiny house, yes. And he's like, so why don't you start a tiny house Instagram and grow the Instagram? And from there, you try to bring these people to your house. I'm like, fuck yes. Well, like, we started the idea that we are not going to launch the channel until we reach 20,000 followers on Instagram. That, that was the goal. When we reach 20,000 followers, on, so we created a secondary Instagram. That's not even Odd Life Crafting. So I don't know if anyone knows, but it's called Living Time Project. I was checking with him. So we still have 151,000 followers. Yeah, so we... Let's have a look. Let's see what's going on here. <laughs> what is it again? Hawaii, so, why don't post it's anything. been a long time we don't post on Living Time, but... I don't have time for this. Yeah, what's Living Time called? Project. Living Tiny Living. Project. Living Tiny Project. I'll, I'll follow this because I love tiny homes. So yeah, so basically what we create, we create an Instagram in order to grow an audience for that Instagram that is interested on the same thing we want to do. Yeah. But no one knew that Living Tiny and Odd Life are the same thing. That is not clear there. But... Yeah. We had 20,000 people that once a week we could go and post the link for our video of the week. Exactly. And in the beginning that like the algorithm of YouTube won't even see you, we had our own audience to bring to the video. Yeah, you could direct some people to it already. So that's how the channel is starting to grow even before the algorithm helped to grow. Yeah. Of course, yeah. we got to a point that we didn't need the Instagram anymore. But that was like literally a side project to jump into another project and actually work it so well, really, really well. I mean, open up doors, people get to know you, you can show you what you do. And, and it's a nice one because I mm. I have a, like a gallery to yeah. search for and references. references, yeah. And even for oh, the yeah, shipping container house. I'm going to take a look through that. Like, there's some yeah, so the shipping, uh, properties in there. Yeah, in the shipping container house, that was like a research yeah. for the design of the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at the same time, we were searching for 
what to do with our own house, but we are growing the audience here to bring there. And that was a way because I've done the same. I, well, more or less, I did the same. Yeah. But well, I did. I started the podcast, and then I was like, okay, maybe people won't listen if nobody knows where it is or what it yeah. is. So I was like, I'll do an Instagram account. I had no experience on it. Um, but then loads of people started following that, and then people sent really nice messages. And uh, put, but they're the same. You know, but they're the same account, like, looks. but with the same name, right? Yeah. So that's like Ocean Cruises Instagram. Yeah. Um, but imagine. So, yeah. But. Yeah, but imagine if you create an Instagram that's not related to the other product directly, mm -hmm. but there is a huge potential of growing much faster. Well, we will because do this also because when, when not, we start cruising, we're going to do charters like liverboard experiences. Yeah. And I'll post stuff on there to yeah. because there may be some customers there. You know what I mean? So yeah, because it's like a crossover in a way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because I mean, like it's so much easier to grow an Instagram when you guarantee good content every single day. Uh, yeah, a personal account is really hard to grow. It's like a, a personal account. It's just like always the same person, always the same story. Oh, it's it's much harder to grow. But when it is just a random like good stories every single day, it makes it easier. And I mean, it's funny because yeah. we 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 did a friend. Um, we helped a friend to create an Instagram about container houses, yes. about container yeah. buildings in general, and he created an Instagram about con containers. And he started posting just containers. And every time he, he posted our video about the shipping container house, we it's still grow. <laughs> we still we still grow until yes. nowadays. No way. We're yeah. still growing. Yeah. That's just the only way we can grow Instagram is just like we're just like sideways. And like anytime he just a little collaboration here and there and then it grows a little bit. But that's yeah. So Instagram's crazy. Like I, I put stuff on there. Well, for two reasons. Well, actually, we, we put, I put some of my own photos on now because we've like found our boats and all that type of stuff. Um, but uh, so to promote the podcast, so I put a photo of you guys on there and say, yep. we just spoke. And then I put like a little trailer on there. But then also to help other people grow their Instagram accounts. Like yep. if I've got more followers than them and then yep. they, and they, they yep. always come back and say, we just saw a spike in followers. So it works. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Basically, yeah, that's that's collaborations are great. Yeah, Instagram is yeah. tough. Uh, we we try to we try and we are trying to post more up to date things on Instagram. So we don't even post anymore about the video of the week. No, because it gets confusing. If we post about the week video, that means it's two months ago, and then we post something about today, and then it's just like so. We just now we just left like Instagram is daily. It's yeah, it's daily. It's like what happened today. Yeah. And YouTube is like two months ago. So otherwise, it's just too confusing for us. Well, that's what, that, that also gives people to watch on YouTube a very um, good reason to follow you on Instagram. Yeah, and if you do the same it, thing, yeah. and for me, it doesn't make, doesn't make sense to do the same thing on both platforms. Otherwise, yeah. people yeah. are just going to follow on one or on the other. It's just the same thing. Yeah, it's a good, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, it's a really if you do different point. things on each platform, I think it's better. So what's happening in the future? The plan was to sail yeah. around the world. Yeah, the, the plan is to sail until it stops being fun. Yeah. Without we we have like short and medium term goals, so Brazil has a really long coast, and you can sail up and down any time of the year, but there are easier times and worse times to go north or south. Yeah. So the season to start going north just started now. Yeah. So that some people don't understand, like, oh, you that, that's it's it's tough to have a YouTube channel sometimes, and so many people watching what you do and judging what you do. So after two years refitting the boat on the boat yard full time, people expect that you splash the boat and you cross the Atlantic next week. And that's not reality, to be honest. Not my reality. Not Hobart. You, you know what I mean? Gets I mean, like, I, I have no... We are still uh, learning. We, 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 we're not in a hurry. No, and we are still learning the boat systems. Like, like we broke the quadrant like two times, three times. And no, we, we, we are still, hands. we actually are still finishing the boat. Like yeah. we are, you know, like we have like a long shaking now cruise that we are like fixing things and getting things better. Like the past month, we've been on a marina just to do some refit on the boat, like some some modifications that we wanted after almost a year sailing. Yeah. And we've been here full time, wor full time working on the boat for like almost a month already. We're leaving That's two days. Be, yeah. And the modifications we did now are like really important ones, like more solar panels. We fixed the quadrant. We replaced, it's like a lot the of like the canvas. the canvas. We did some modifications because it was not good enough. And we, so we did a lot of yeah. good things on the boat. 
And the reason for that is because we want to take the time to do it properly. We wanted to get to know the places properly. I, we, you know, some places we stop it to, we're like, no, we, let's sleep one night on this anchorage. We spend like two weeks on anchorage. We were supposed to stay one night because it's good. Stay. That's it, basically. Yeah. But the plan for now is to go into the north part of Brazil until December. And in December, yeah. in December, go to the Caribbean. Yeah, That's basically. Yeah, now. basically, we were yeah, waiting because we are in a really beautiful region right now. Probably most of the people would say the most pretty coast of Brazil, the place where we are, has like over 350 islands, beautiful weather, beautiful place. And we are here enjoying this region until we start going north when, when the south wind starts to blow more often. Because okay. from now on, we're going to start having more south wind, but the window changes in like three months from now. So in three months from now, we start having too much north wind in the beginning of this trip. So we have a few crossings until one of the corners of Brazil, the bottom corner. And yeah. this corner, if you do with south winds, all good. But if you get north wind, it could be like 40 knots against, with current yeah. against, and a lot of ships. And it's like, there is no need for that. Why? No, it's the wrong time. Yeah. In the wrong time. So we are waiting for the right window. And now we are actually waiting another month because it was supposed to be the mm -hmm. day after tomorrow. No, it was supposed tomorrow. to be tomorrow, actually. We're going to have our first patron sailing with us. So he was supposed nice. to arrive tomorrow. So we got COVID. That's why we de days. we delay a week <laughs> the, the podcast. Yeah, we were supposed to record People a podcast. Don't get COVID. COVID. It's crazy. It's been like three years. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so we got COVID right in time to get better, and the patron arrived. <laughs> and yeah. yesterday, our patron got COVID in the US. Oh, what? So now he's gonna delay another week until he comes. So we're gonna wait for another week until he comes, and he's gonna sail with us full time for ten days. That's just gonna. Be that's one of the things we really wanted to do for so long is to have one of the guys that made what we do possible. A lot yeah, of, and of good on you for waiting for him as well. Like uh, you changed your plans, you know, to to give him yeah, his yeah. experience. So good on you. Yeah, and we really want to have him on this region because it's so beautiful. And maybe yeah. now that we delay a little bit, he might do a crossing with us to Rio de Janeiro. That's, that's he has no sailing experience. Yeah, but. Rio de Janeiro, uh, you heard about Rio probably. Yeah, of course, yeah. Popular place. I, I've been in Rio one time in my life, two times, and I have I, I don't know Rio at all. I was a kid. I, I don't know the place, and it's beautiful. The anchorage where we arrived, it's just so beautiful. And arriving in Rio by boat must be like a really awesome experience that he might be with us, and that's going to be just so cool. And we've been, yeah. you know, talking a lot the past few weeks to organize the trip. And that's the reason why we're waiting a little bit longer because we want to, we want him to have the best trip of his life, basically. And here is the place to do that. And from there, how, the how idea... did you select this guy? Because so I take it you've got quite a lot of patrons and supporters. How could... how is it? How did this guy get this uh, amazing yeah. <laughs> opportunity? It was like a how do you call it? a, a draw, a draft, yeah. like a draw. Um, oh, a draw position, and something like, a that. like a number, just a random number. We have like cool. three hundred, uh, I think, like two hundred and thirty patrons and we thought like our, our patrons are spread all over the world i'm like there's no way the first person would will be able to come <laughs> you know like there's so we're gonna draw 10 names <laughs> we try the first one if he wants he comes the second and after 10 we draw another 10 until we find someone that's willing to come all the way to brazil <laughs> because it's really far and, and i mean people COVID, work. <laughs> and people work people have their job and there's covid and all that and the first person to get chosen he was like I never travel on an airplane since COVID hit. And yeah. I don't think it's the right timing to do it. I really don't want to travel right now, but I cannot say no, so I'm coming. <laughs> Amazing. And that was the first one as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's crazy. And he arrives on the 17th. That he's like mm, 12 days from now. <laughs> oh, he's no, got such a good time. That's really good. I did a yeah, podcast so, with um, a guy called James. He's got a channel called Zingaro. Yeah, we know. Yeah. We, 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 say, we say on Zingaro, actually. We went to Panama last yeah. year. We say on Zingaro. Yeah, so I, I'm sailing with James in a couple of weeks, actually. He's bringing a boat over uh, to Europe. I'm well, meeting up cool. with him in uh, the Azores, Portuguese islands, and then we're taking it to Ibiza. Um, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, he, he, he does similar things. So he meets up with his patrons and he takes them sailing, and it's like... Uh, that's an amazing experience to give someone. Yep. It's great that you do that. Like I think, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying the other YouTube channels aren't good at all. I'm, I'm just yeah, yeah. saying like that is a really cool thing to do for people. 
yeah, so the idea now is to wait for him, go to Rio, and from Rio, we start going north with the goal of reaching the corner, the northeast corner of Brazil by October. So if we manage to read, to get there by October, we leave the boat there. We fly to the US for the uh, Annapolis boat show again. We went last year, it was awesome. We want to go to the boat we show again. again we met James, yeah, we met James <laughs> on the boat show. So we fly to the US, go to the boat show, fly back to Brazil, prepare the boat for a month, and in December, cross the Caribbean. From there, I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, but that's, that's good. Like, just aim for that. That's a great start. Yeah. I mean, like from there, it all depends. Like, how do the boat behaves on this trip? Oh, yeah. Do we lock yeah, the yeah. boat? Because we're, right now, we, I mean, we don't have the enough experience to guarantee we love the boat. We we like so far, but we've been, you know, changing things here, there, and getting to know the boat better. I think by the Caribbean, we're gonna know 100 percent if that's the boat. If yeah. it's not, if we wanna sail to Europe after the season on the Caribbean, if we want to go to the Pacific, if we want to take maybe six months refit again in Panama to do some modifications that we found out on this trip that could be done, who knows? I have no idea. Yeah, but you know, like you just, the way you've built that boat, I've got to be honest guys, like I watched, I think it was maybe like video two or three or four or whatever of when you got the boat. Uh, yeah. And that's when I was like, oh, those are the guys who were building the steel, the steel container boat. And I, I looked at the boat and I was like, this is a fucking disaster. Like, this is not going to work. There is so, the interior was great, but the exterior, the engine, the electrical systems, navigation, plumbing, I was like, that is massive. And then when you were saying that you've never worked on boats before, I was like, God bless them. You know, I was like, this could go terribly. Well, I mean, well, you've done we, an amazing had, job. Yeah, we had a small 26 foot boat before. We had a 19 foot and a 26 foot boat. But it's our third boat. But it was so good when we bought, we didn't <laughs> need it. Really no, yeah, there was nothing to be done. You know, the boat was in a really good shape. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, once you commit to what we, you really want, and it's if it's real, if it's really your dream, you can do anything. It's just oh, a yeah, matter of sure. wanting to do. And the boat, the reality is, we received two kinds of emails and messages when we bought the boat. Half of them, maybe. 90% of them would be like, this boat is not worth shit. This boat is condemned. This boat, there is, a, there is a reason why no one bought this boat before in 22 years. Oh, that's this boat, silly. I wouldn't agree with that. Like, it, it was in a tough shape, but definitely fixable. No, no, that was 90%. And then there was the 10%. Oh, that's stupid. And then there was the 10% that we received emails like, what the fuck? How could you buy this boat? The owner never even let me inside to see the boat. So oh. many people tried to buy the boat, but he never wanted to sell the Even boat. Even friend of ours. Even friend of ours. We met so many people because of the story of this boat. Mm -hmm. He he didn't want to sell. It's not because the boat wasn't. He just didn't want to sell. And from even though from the outside looks bad, the structure of the boat was yeah. in perfect condition. You have no idea yeah. the, the the welds of the hull. It's just like. The only fixings that we had, rust that we have, was on the deck because of wooden trim, because the wood would hold uh, moisture on the bottom of the wood and like tiny spot, like eight tiny spots this big. That's nothing. Nothing on the sides, nothing on the bottom. The inside of the plates are just in perfect condition and a metal boat rusts from inside out, not from outside in. Inside is just, if you, if you, if you see the plates of metal, it's just like, People are like, no, because we need to do a scan because this boat's condemned. I'm like, you have no idea. There's no rust. The primer yeah. is the original primer for 30 years and it's still in good condition. I mean, it's just, I mean, obviously it's been on the heart for a long time, but even prior to that, it's just been very well maintained, maintained yeah. and loved. Um, yeah. It, what, it has one, to be. But I think you get that more with steel boats than you do with like fiberglass boats. I think people love steel boats more. They become like a bit more attached to them and work on them. Yeah, the, the thing, uh, once someone told me, a, a guy that I think is one of the main like uh, metal boat, sailboat builder in Brazil back 30 years ago, he's like, a metal boat need to be well conceived, need to be well built with a good design, with no design problems. If the design is good and you build really well, it lasts for so long. If the design is bad and it's not built well, it lasts for two years. Because you have like places that the condensation hold water, and then there is this, and there is like a lot of small problems. This boat was built professionally by 
I would say even better than a boatyard because uh, what happened is that the company that built this boat was not a boatyard. It was a company that built machines. Mm -hmm. And somehow the owner of the company wanted to build boats on the spare time of his employees. So he had a company for years. And when he decided to build a boat, a lot different than a lot of people do because like, let's say I want to build a boat. Sometimes people are like, oh, I want to build a boat. So I, I, I draw the boat, I design the boat, but I have no experience, it doesn't work. So the guy knew he couldn't design a boat. So he went to Europe and he bought the design from the best designers he could find. So he bought, there is a boat yard in French called, in France called Meta, Meta Boat Yard. Okay. Meta. So Meta exists until today. It's a really good boat yard. And back then, Gilbert and Nivelle, two designers, they work for Meta. And they do all sorts of boats that go to Antarctica and traveling boats, and they're really good. So they bought the design from Meta, and they build professionally in Brazil with such good quality. The welds are little, it's just beautiful. It's just like the way they build the boats just and the, the solutions of the boat is good because there was a good design, first of all. Yeah. So, I mean, it, the, the bones of the boat, the structure was yep. just in absolute perfect order. You basically just needed to redo everything in size. Yeah, just systems. systems. I mean, like, yeah. just like uh, the plumbing system we do, uh, did 100%. The electrical system, to be honest, we it's, just did the electrical panel. Yeah, just the panel. You still the rest. need yeah. to do all the external panels. Yeah, just external. external yeah, lights. it works. We could get better. But the electronics, of course, 30 years old, they're out yeah. to they out there. Yeah. So electronics, we replace everything. We paint the exterior. We, we decide to replace the mess for a better mess. Sales. And yeah, sales, new sales. And new engine, we decide to put it. And all of that's because yeah. the channel started going well and could afford to do that. We didn't need to do that, but the channel opened up doors. For example, when we thought about replacing the mess because the old owner said, yeah, this mess is really heavy. There's, there is this problem and this problem. And I'm like, so how about we sell this mess and we buy a brand new one? And people on the boat yard will be like, no one sells mess. Old mess, forget it. You sell for the yeah. scrap aluminum. You just sell to a junkyard. I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure we can sell a mess. And it's like, he couldn't believe, no one could believe. So we, we put in one video that we want to sell our masks and we sold in a week. <laughs> so YouTube can sell masks. <laughs> yes, YouTube can sell masks and we sold for one third of the price of the brand new masks and brand new rigging. So we got, so it was like, nice. so we yeah, got a sponsor helps. for, yeah, so we got sponsored for like turning buckles and for like furling system. And then we sold the mess. It was like everything worked so well. Yeah. And even the money to pay for the mess that we need Right on the same month, we did like three three sponsor videos that people complain sometimes. Like, oh, we did like an Audible sponsor video, and we did a Skillshare sponsor video, and a coffee one, and a coffee one. But that paid for the mess. How yeah. shouldn't I do that? I mean, like, first of all, I I, I like the, the comp products. I like the products Audible. I like Skillshare, and I like I drink we drink coffee every single day. We love like yeah, it's like coffee a coffee is a good one. I do a coffee. Oh, one. I mean, like we got paid. To drink coffee for like three months. Good one. I was like, they pay for my mess and I drink good coffee. Why shouldn't I take this sponsor deal? Yeah, that's a great deal. And, and even though it makes completely sense, some people complain, of course, yeah. because you know, like you're selling out, you're you, whatever, I don't know, just, you know, YouTube. And even all these people, I, I was having a discussion with um, the guys, we, we, we're doing something else, I'll tell you about it after the podcast. Um, but yeah, we were having a discussion about these like negative people. I'm like, the, what is going on? Why would you do? I've never like left a bad review on an application. I've never left a bad review online for anything. I've never left a negative comment. I just don't understand that. Like, let people yeah. have a good life and try hard. And just, I like, mean, we, you know, <laughs> yeah, we got we got some bad comments in the beginning of the boat because people didn't believe on the boat and didn't believe that we could do the job. And that was the beginning. And then after a while, I think people understood, no, these guys can do it. I mean, like, they can pull this one off. And it was yeah. fine for years, like two years, almost two years. And then, start, and, and then yeah, that was... being like, uh, you guys don't want to go to the water. You oh, don't yeah, want yeah, to that, that's true. That was this, this you are just, uh, just... Yeah, you are just, like, holding on the boat yard because you want to make money out of YouTube. Yeah, you're you're, yeah. you're, you're going to sail this boat and go back to the house. You're never going to... This boat's going to sink or whatever. I'm like... No, we are taking the time because we think 
it's important to take the time and do it properly. But people are just complaining that. And after we splashed the boat and we set sail, things got better. And then suddenly in December this year, six months ago, we went to the U.S. for a job, a side job. That, that's a funny story. We uh, I don't know if you you heard. Of, we did like a, commer- a TV commercial. So we got hired. Oh, what was it? Yeah, one of our one of our subscribers, uh, he's a CEO of a company that owns the New York Stock Exchange. Oh no, I know that because I follow you guys on Instagram, and yeah. uh, you posted. You, did you open or close the market? One of the yeah, that was, that was yeah, that was like a month yeah. a month ago, yeah. Right, but that yeah, was that, that was, was crazy. Lunch. That was really yeah. Good so that was that was the lunch. That was the lunch of the commercial. That's why Roberto closed the the, the day of the stocks because was, that was the lunch of the commercial. And when we went to the States, by chance, I'm like, fuck, we are all the way in the US. We met the guys from Sell the Mess in the boat show two months before that. I'm like, we could rent a car and drive. We're in Florida. We can drive to South Carolina and visit Sell them. I'm like, when are we going to be here again? So we called them up and we went to spend three days in the factory with them, getting to know Sell them factory. Brilliant. And on the way to Sell them, we were like, oh, Let's stop to visit a friend on the way so we can, you know, instead of nine hours, we can drive like two hours and then another six hours. And you you interview her already. I actually just watched your podcast with her, Taylor. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's lovely. She's such a nice girl. Yeah, that um, was, I think. Yeah, that was I last think, year, I think. Yeah, yeah. it was right. I, I, we were doing the math. It was right when we went to visit her, actually. <laughs> oh, cool. So cool. So we stopped to talk to Taylor. And that was so awesome. Yeah, the cool thing is that right when we arrive back from the States, we start sailing together with another boat, like buddy boats, That's with a guy that we met in the last marina we stay. And he is a doctor. He took a gap year just to sail on his boat and he lives with his dog. So it's him and his dog. And we became really good friends. And I had no idea he would let me do a tattoo on him. And when I arrived back with the tattoo machine, I was like, no. That's what... So I did on the first night, I did three on him. No so way. I started learning <laughs> with him. Yeah, he, he was the guinea pig. Like he was the one that I did the mistakes for sure. But he was on the same mentality as I was. So he don't care. He's fine. Uh, he has no problem with the little, I don't know, bad line that I did on him. Because the memory is more important than the drawing itself. And yeah, that sure. taught me a lot. And that was was so cool. For example, one of the tattoos that, and, and actually I, it's not just tattooing, giving the opportunity for people to get a tattoo, but it's also the opportunity to give other people the opportunity to tattoo themselves. Yeah. So basically, I have a tattoo machine. If you want to tattoo yourself, you, you come to my board. I'm like, I'm going to teach you and you can do it on yourself. And it's a, such a quick, I did two on myself already. And it's so cool. It's just like the coolest experience. <laughs> so this, we were in an anchorage that we arrived. There were so many mosquitoes. We hated the first night. And we're like, we need to leave. This place is terrible. And then the next day, we found out that we could fish squids on that anchorage. Okay. We're like, oh, it's not that bad. Let's go fish squids then. So we're like, so let's fish squids. If we catch 50 squids, we're going to tattoo a squid. And then we went fishing. And for four hours during the night, because it's during the night, at one point, we were like exhausted. Like, no, we gave up. That's it. So we came back and we count 39. We didn't catch fish but next day we we're like no let's try again so we went again out and we got in one hour 150 squids in one hour what how did you catch so many squids so quick we ate five for people. we ate in five people we ate during three weeks all all squids for five people so you have just like calamari yeah, yeah, yeah just like calamari yeah the whole all time. kinds like with like pasta with rice with these with that with everything Oh, that's a great life. So, I totally agree that. You, after you catch 150 squids with good friends during a night, how can you not get the tattoo? I'm like, no, we're doing the tattoo. So we did the same tattoo we have, but I did it on myself and he did it on himself. That's really good. Because, that's a cool story. Yeah, but that's people that's hated the video. That's the, the, that's a video. What about like, these what? people? These people. I'm like, <laughs> what's wrong with, what's wrong with, yeah, it's, I don't get it. Well. Happens. I mean, listen, you've got you've got where you are by ignoring everyone yeah, who's I mean, giving like, you uh, bad advice or for negativity. Me, I, I'm pretty sure I will remember this day as long as I live. Anytime I look to my leg, 
I, I see every time I, I look at my leg, I see a squid and I remember when we got 150 squids. That's it. It's not the perfect tattoo. I, it's much better than I thought it would be, to be honest. I think I did a really good job. I love it. It's one of my favorites. I really like that. Yeah. And it seems like it's weird. It seems like now that it's fully healed, it's better than before even. And I, I will yeah, always remember that day that we got the squid. It's just that's it. Well, yeah, it means something. It's, you know, it's there to like represent the experience. Mate, it's going to be very interesting. Maybe in 20 years' time, you're going to be one of these people that's just like head to toe green, you know, completely covered in memories. <laughs> and, and it's cool because, you know, like it's, you give meaning, like, for example, the trip to Taylor's boat. I look to her boyfriend's boat on my leg and I have the coordinates of the place even tattooed. Like, yeah. I remember 100%. That was a really, that was like a crazy trip. That, that was like, how can I not get a tattoo? In, out of nowhere, a company hired us to go to the US to film a commercial. They sent a private jet to pick us up in Brazil and to take us back to our hometown straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the two of us. We have like a great week of shooting. Like we were just waiting for the day of the shooting. It's and there was, lot. yeah, we, we had nothing to do. Like we, there was like 50 people running around to get things ready for the commercial. And we just sat around and okay. eat for like four days. Like eat so well, it's so good. It was like the dream job, you know, like just sit there, hang out, eat a little bit, eat a little bit more. And then we shot one day and then we go to these friends on their boat. And it's like, that's a moment that I want to remember always. Yeah, yeah, good memories. Yeah, that's 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 it. I'm pretty sure in ten years I will have a lot of tattoos to remember a lot of moments. And we also went uh, help. foiling with tulas in the summer. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a crazy trip. That was like, and that's because we are a sailing channel supposedly, but we don't want just to be a sailing channel. We want to be a channel about our dreams. That's it. That's all. I don't know if in three years from now I won't take like six months off to go uh, van life in Europe for six months. Who knows? I might do it. We might do it. Why not? We want to be someone that fully follow our dreams every day. And yeah. to be honest, as soon as we start doing like unexpected things, the channels are going down. And that's just the worst thing for me because that's the moment that I'm more passionate about what we do. Like I want, I always wanted a job that we open you know like you invite me to go to spain and we fly tomorrow to spain we went to the boat show in annapolis we needed to do quarantine in order to go to the u.s because of covid for 15 days we had nowhere to do quarantine i found out that parlay revival calling from parlay was in panama i never met him before he never heard of us i messaged him on whatsapp and on instagram i'm like hey we are going to go to the boat show you are going to go to the boat show we need to do quarantine can we stay in your boat for 15 days if yes, can you say today? Because we need to arrive tomorrow. Literally, like, let me know today. He's like, call me now and we call. And the next night we were in Parley for two weeks. That's so, that's the life, <laughs> so that's the life I want. I want a life that I don't know what's going to happen a month from now. And I wanted to do videos that people don't really know what's going to happen in two months. But they trust that's going to be something cool. And they keep coming yeah. for something cool. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, when it's out of, you, you're like, oh, I like that channel that, I'm not sure what they're, go they're going to do in six months, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be something interesting. And once we started actually leaving that is when people started liking less the content. When we started actually living the life we fully want, like getting hired to do a commercial and flying to the US and then coming back and sail for three months in a nice river and then going back to the US for a boat show. And then it's, so when we started being more unexpected, when we started being less predictable, that's when the audience started liking less. That's crazy for me because I don't like when it's too predictable. When I watch a channel for too long that I know what's going to happen next week, it started being, it stopped being fun for me. I think I don't this know, is just, just the way these things work. You know, well, it's like if you watched your favorite TV show, Friends, for example, then yeah. one episode for the rest of the entire series, they just weren't friends. You'd be yeah. like, well, I'm gone. I want the friends. You know, yeah. <laughs> people go to the source because that is exactly what they're looking for. So if you but change the nature of it, you, you'll change the audience, but you'll get new people. It, yeah, it's, the way it's crazy. It I mean, like uh, we are we are doing like a shrink uh, appointment right now. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I mean, it, yeah. We need to tell someone. Yeah, we need to like up someone, you know, it's just 
yeah, it's 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 crazy. Like having a YouTube channel full time sometimes is crazy if you pay attention to comments, if you pay attention to the audience, and it's oh, natural. You yeah, you can't, but it's hard not to uh, at the same time. You know, like we read yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. You can't, but you you should at the same time, but you shouldn't. It's just we, we used to answer every single comment. Yeah. I try to do I try to do that because I want to like engage with as many people as possible. I don't get that many negative ones, but I don't do YouTube. I only I only do the Instagram and the podcast, so I don't really get any of that. But uh, I just delete them. Like you get some of the comments that people put on the, these YouTube videos. I'm like, I'm, some of them are like racist, yeah. sexist, uh, yeah. offensive. If it's, aggr- if it's aggressive, oh. we delete any aggressive or. Yeah, yeah. Either aggressive or talking about Roberta because we don't give the freedom of people doing that. Like, we are not a channel that is showing ass in ticks all the time. You know, like, some, I'm not against that. I'm not saying anything against other channels that do that. But if you do that, you are willing to have people talk about that. Yeah. But if, that's you, if the I don't do that, attracting. if I don't do that, that means I don't want people to, you know, start talking shit about Roberta and that's it. We delete it. We don't need this kind of comment because yeah, yeah, that's true. kids watch our channel, literally. Yeah. Like we yeah. go to the boat show and come like five years old that been watching for a long time. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's I, I definitely agree with it from that perspective. Like, uh, you know, and that's your work. And do you really want the conversation around your work to be filled with negativity? Uh, no. So nope. just get rid of it. <laughs> that's that's but, the way. But, that's but the way I to short up, but to put in, uh, like in last words, life has been really good for the past months. Channel not being great, yeah. But life is being the best ever, ever, ever been. The thing is, it's just like if you are living the type of life that you want to live and it makes you happy and fulfilled, whatever yeah. comes out of that will be positive. Nothing negative can yeah. come from that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. what whatever shit is going on now, it will just move on. It will digress, yeah. and other good but, stuff will come out of it. So, are you going to Naples this year? You know, I've never even thought about going. Like, Should. I've never had a conversation about it. You, you just mentioned oh. it then, and I was like, oh, that might be interesting. Yeah, I always I mean, wanted to go. It's a funny story. Right. Oh yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Propaganda. So oh, I always, I always wanted to go, but then came COVID, and they didn't have for a year. And I'm like, fuck. And then, yeah, last year I was like, yeah, I want, we want to go, but then there's quarantine. It's not possible. It's just too expensive to do quarantine anywhere. And then, it's a funny story. I don't remember if I, I think I told you, I told Colin. So Colin from Parlay posts an in stories on Instagram. Yeah, a little bit before that, I I message. Uh, Jade from Expedition Evans to ask about a camera because they were using the camera that I want to buy. So I messaged her like six months before and they never answer. And six months later, she answered and talked about the camera. And she's like, oh, are you guys going to Annapolis this year? And I answered like, yeah, we wish you could, but no, it's not possible because of COVID, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, if you decide to come, email this guy because he's organizing a booth with all the YouTube channels and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. But I, I'm like, okay, sure, but I won't. It's just like, we cannot do it. And she's like, oh, I'm going to let him know anyways, just to let him know that you might contact him. So a month passed by and calling posts and posts on Instagram. Oh, I'm going to be in, in Annapolis in two, in, I don't know, two weeks from now. And with this, this, and this channel. And he po- and he tagged us. I never talked to him. I've been watching him for a while. I know who he is. I had no idea he knows who we are. And he posts like odd life captions going these, these. I'm like, I mean, like, <laughs> there was almost a conspiracy like, to get calling, to go I, I mean, And I'm like, and literally, I'm not joking, literally, I'm like, that was Saturday, no, Sunday. I'm like, if Colin posted that we're going to go to Annapolis, you rather go. I think that might be a sign. I think we should go to Annapolis. And I'm like, <laughs> if he knows, and well, like a day before that, we found out that we could go to Panama. We didn't know Panama could be quarantined because a sponsor said Panama could be an option. And I'm like, so Colin said we are going to go. He at least know we exist. He posts our name. So I, P- I, I, I messaged him. I DM him on Instagram. Hey, I'm Duca. Uh, we want to go to Annapolis. You, you, you post our, us. Can we go to your boat tomorrow? <laughs> so we next night, yeah. Summer. So next time, we're, next day, we're in Panama for two and weeks. Then we did so the, it's like really yeah. quick. And then we stay at Evan's boat in Annapolis. In Annapolis, we stay at Evan's boat for like <laughs> the week. Oh, nice. Colin just seems like, he seems like such a cool guy. And I've, 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 through cruising and you're sailing in different locations, I've met like quite a few people who've spent time with him. And like everybody yeah. just says he's just like a real dude. He's, um, yeah. he's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, we yeah, spent yeah. like literally, we spent 15 days on his boat and we were part of the family. A hundred percent. 
We were like, yeah, I, I get that from him. Yeah, yeah. Yo, we were like, I've, I've he, never he, actually spoken to him. No, he's a really, really awesome guy. Genuinely, he's a really, really awesome, really hard worker and really awesome guy. He's a good friend now. He's, it was like, it was someone that literally I messaged today, tomorrow I'm at his book. It's just like, it's, that's the life I want. I want to be, you yeah. know, I want to things, new things to happen out of nowhere. Listen, thank, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, who knows if, if I do end up going to Annapolis or some other time, uh, I, yeah, I'd, you know, I'd love to meet you and spend some time with you. Yep, and, uh, and, yeah, and, well, I can't wait to follow your story. And, and we cannot invite everyone that's watching or listening to that to come to the boat, but we can invite you if any time. Nice. Yeah. So anytime in between now and October, if you feel like coming to Brazil, we have a cabin. Just come and we can do a crossing with us. Anytime you feel.